The following is my conversation with Ashwini Jindal. Ashwin along with his team members Ankur and Pawan have created one of the best Llama 3.1 fine tunes. We dive into the details about how did they come about this fine tune. We also briefly touch upon Ashwini's new rips winning challenge. I hope this podcast would be helpful to you if you are into fine tuning and also anything to do with LLMs. Welcome to the One Little Coder podcast. Ashwini, please tell us more about yourself. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks Abdul for giving this opportunity. I am Ashwini. I am currently part of the small team which we call team upai so we are three independent researchers ankur pawan and me little bit about ourselves like ankur he ankur is an independent uh, researcher as well as an entrepreneur and he has a startup they are in india pawan is based uh, based in thailand and he works at a uh, financial bank called datax uh, as a machine as an LL, llm developer and he is leading lot of efforts over there uh, i am currently working as a llm developer at linkedin uh in us yeah so how do we basically we know each other from last 6 years we used to work at a uh, sort of a startup uh, in based in bangalore called ipsoft and where we were working on building chatbots together so this was a time in like back in 2016 or 17 when deep learning was just starting to get starting up right so we used to like i think there that was a time when there was other uh, tooling that we typically see today there was no tooling like that and uh, we literally i remember like we literally had to write the forward like implement the neural network from scratch write the forward loop and everything and write the loss function and all of that right so and that time only prop framework for building deep neural uh, deep neural networks was tensorflow and that was like uh, these days we see keras and tf2.0 it was not like that it was like you had to really build everything from scratch and i think theano was also very popular so yeah i think good part about working over there we worked there for like one and half year together we were working on building uh, chatbots using lstms and uh, such architectures and uh, we used to read like lot of papers and i guess that was the time when we actually learned a lot like uh, we learned the fundamentals of nlp and how to how these models actually work and things like that uh, and apart from that we also had like Stanford faculty professor Christopher Manning who was our advisor and we used to have a we have a weekly call with professor Manning and uh, every time we used to feel stuck on something and we used to ask him okay professor Manning can you tell like how to solve this and professor Manning used to tell us okay can you go to that paper read that paper and you'll find something right so it was like very interesting journey to be honest and and yeah and all like i think there were like it was a mem- team of total 10 members i guess there and it was a pure startup culture like people were super enthusiastic reading papers doing some hacks and other things right so yeah so that's how we knew each other and i think last year we sort of uh, we sort of grouped together and we thought like okay let's sort of do something in llms and i think just making it short like we published mathematical reasoning model arithmo which became a state of the art then we won the new rips competition we got the globally first rank there and uh, then we i think we we sort of won three or four other llm competition like uh, in the financial llm space and also in like a uh, low resource language space like arabic nlp space by far the llama 3.1 storm has been our i guess this is the model that community is really liking it is trending on hugging face and like we have seen like so far i think in 5 days we have seen like 13 and 1500 downloads so far model is like people are really liking it and we have seen like some of the good stories and uh, we are already in touch with some of the companies also who are testing the model and they have also seen some really good results that's really great to know and it's a very good segue like one of the reason we are talking today is uh... due to llama 3.1 uh, storm model so why don't you tell us about it uh, llama 3.1 is basically this model is based on llama 3.1 which is published by meta but it it improves the improves the model capability across different benchmarks so if you call let's say there are different capabilities that we generally care about when it comes to llm like instruction following let's say if you are asking llm please give me a response in 500 words the model should not give a response in 1000 words right so the instruction following is very important model should have a very good knowledge base in terms of let's say if you ask who is the prime minister of india right it should not it should uh, correctly name the prime minister right so the knowledge of the internal knowledge of the model has to be accurate it should not hallucinate uh, and then model should also be able to solve uh, difficult like complex reasoning task right 
and then there are other benchmarks like mathematical the mathematical reasoning and one in one very critical uh, improvement that we have made with llama 3.1 storm model is function calling so we have improved the function calling of llama 3.1 Compared to Lama Meta Lama model, we have improved it by by additional ten percent. So that model is like uh, in terms of benchmark, the model is doing amazingly well. And I can show you like some of the key figure in terms of how the model look like. So basically, if we if we look at the left curve, this is the performance comparison with respect to Meta model, and you can see like we are improving across the instruction following. The model internal knowledge, which is determined by GPQ and MMLU Pro, then the reasoning reasoning benchmarks like MUSR, ARC, the hallucination, and finally the function calling, which is like we have improved the function calling by in the range of absolute ten percent. And uh, not just the Llama model. There was a uh, there is a very latest model that is published uh, just last Thursday, uh, which is called Hums Three. It is by an open source community. And again, like we are, uh, we are able to outperform that uh, that model consistently across the benchmarks. And particularly, the notable gap is in the instruction following. So our instruction model, our models instruction following capabilities are like really huge. So this is a summary like model is performing with the same eight billion parameter category. You are getting a uh, capabilities of much bigger model. Yeah. So this has been like. Uh, people are really liking it. They are testing different capabilities like function calling, entity extractions, and similar other use cases. This is this is awesome. Like I was also mind blown when I saw the numbers. Uh, one is of course like it is performing better than the base uh, or the Meta's instruct following model. But also Hermes like news research is some uh, the re group of researchers I respect a lot. And your model is like outperforming even their fine tune. So. So like quite interested in seeing um, what is the secret sauce and how did it happen? Could you like give us a walkthrough of let's say you took uh, the base, not the base model or the instruct model or I don't know whether you took the base model or instruct model. Could you tell us like how did it um, how how did the final storm model come into picture? For sure. So thanks for asking. Uh, this work is uh, honestly the extension of our NeurIPS work. So we won, like I, like I was mentioning in the start, like we won the NeurIPS competition. And if I just tell what was the core ingredient of that competition, our core ingredient was the data curation. So in NeurIPS, what we did, we 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 took a huge data set of five million data, five million records, and we we sampled like really high quality two hundred k records. It's like just four percent of the high quality records from the large data. And we won the competition because our data set was really high quality. It was multitasking in nature. So at the end, uh, our model was doing consistently better on a lot of the competition benchmarks. The la for the Llama 3.1 Storm model, we, we actually improved the data curation step further, right? Uh, I can, so yeah, let to start with, I think the, there are three core ingredients in the model. So the first core ingredient is uh, is the self curation. So in the NeurIPS, what we did is the data curation, but here what we are call we are calling it is self curation. The idea of self curation is instead of using the larger LLM for curating the data to train the smaller LLM, we use the same LLM. So so basically the same LLM, which is Llama 3.1 Instruct model, it it makes the decision for itself whether a data point is valuable for it or not so that's why we're calling it self curation because the model makes the decision for itself and there are two steps here so one step is the uh we basically so yeah just, just to start with we took like very popular open source data sets which are publicly available on hugging face and like we took a large corpus of data set which amounts to like roughly 2.8 million examples and then we filtered we first applied the first filter of educational value based classifier educational value value based uh, llm based educational value so again we use the same llm llama 8 billion model to filter out the examples which are less which have a less educational value and uh, when we filter them out we come to we basically re we removed more than half of the original data data points right so from so to, we trimmed down 2.8 million records to 1.3 million and then we 
then based on the lama 3.1 report so lama 3.1 report has a very interesting point that they also do a difficulty based sampling or difficulty based curation of the data so we took some inspiration from lama 3.1 there and we also applied the same step of filtering out the examples which are very easy again the assignment of the difficulty is being done by the same llama 8 billion model here so one out of 1.3 million we removed all the easy sample and only took medium and hard and this was our final data of 1 million which is highly highly diverse in terms of task it contains function calling it contains instruction following it contains a uh, multi-ton conversation so you can like you can literally think of different domains in the world across different topics and this is the data that we have built and the best part is we built this data by using the existing data source so we did not generate anything we sort of curated everything right can i can i just ask a question during the educational value based curation and also the difficulty level based curation is it just like a few short prompting where you give an example and then make the llm act as a classifier and then say okay this is high value this is medium value or is it like completely something different so uh, we did not do a few short prompting it's a simple we basically wrote a custom prompt so basically there are again like this work is also inspired from fine web by the hugging face so we wrote a prompt where we said like okay assign assign a score of 1 if this is the criteria assign a score of 2 if this is the criteria right so llm at the end what is going into the llm is the prompt that we have written along with the example so we are not passing addition only like the example that we want to make the decision for along with and is this the first method you started with i mean see there are a lot of skeptics around llm as a judge as a concept a lot of people don't like it a lot of people like it so how confident you were that this is going to improve your model you just like believed in it and started or how was it yeah so again like going back to the same point we took the inspiration from the community so educational value based curation is a work that has already been done by hugging face now uh, so we took the inspiration from, and they have shown that if you filter out the low educational value data you can you can achieve the same quality of model with very less data points so we took the inspiration from hugging face they have published a very wonderful blog on that so we took the inspiration from there and similarly for the difficulty based curation we took the inspiration from lama 3.1 report which is like 92 page long so we basically i think again like we took the inspiration from like sort of latest state of the art research right and so the only difference is let's say for the education value based curation this work hugging face applied to filter out the pretending data while we applied it to filter out the instruction data so that is a kind of high level difference but the idea is same like the high education value based data should does help the model bet in a bet makes sense thank you so much so yeah i think this was the first step and uh, i think the second step is the fine tuning which is like general we just, we typically do like lora based fine tuning or full fine tuning we did little bit of uh, kind of innovation there so instead of doing a full fine tuning or lora based fine tuning we did a spectrum based fine tuning and the spectrum based fine tuning the idea of that is like instead of instead of fine tuning each and every weight matrix of the model only you selectively fine tune only subset of the weight matrices and do, how do you find those subset of weight matrices it is by something called as signal to noise ratio so where every weight matrix is assigned a signal to noise ratio and you only fine tune the matrices which are having highest signal to noise ratio because those matrices are the ones where there is a strong like it because those matrix contains the most important part of the model model knowledge so in this particular work uh, we fine tune top 50% of the layers so this was a spectrum based fine tuning and the third piece is the most important which is the model merging so we merged our self curated based model with another model that exists again on hugging face and when we merge the model we get llama 3.1 storm 8b which is like you know, which outperform all the benchmarks on llama 
did you, did you happen to do i know lama spark i think it's from the company called rc rcai which uh, also published the paper uh, spectrum so did you do any ablation study to see if you did not do the slurp merging you had like x amount of accuracy if you did slurp merging did you see any difference there sure yeah so let me let me show you one plot so this is exactly what we are kind of we want to like we are measuring here so if you see this particular plot the leftmost plot is by the meta model the second plot is the self curation model which is the spectrum based fine tuning model on our data and the third plot is after the merging so you can compare the you can compare second and third bars here and that is the effect of merging only so as you can see like instruction following bbh gpqa which is a knowledge driven qna right the reasoning both truthful qa and agl agi well and as well as the function calling right we have improved the so basically the merging we can essentially say that merging actually helped the model performance in the end but at the same time if you see the middle plot which is a self curation based model that model was already beating lama 3.1 on many of the most of the benchmarks so it's like you are you are like we merge the we merge our one of the best model with lama spark model and there you get get the best of both worlds so we are uh, this is very interesting and did you happen to do a model merging in your um, uh, new rips uh, winning challenge project as well oh no so we did not do any model merging i think model merging was also not allowed in that competition so it was so the new rips competition had a very very specific flavor in terms of what was allowed so they allowed only 24 hours of fine tuning again which is only on single gpu and there were only two gpu types allowed like one is RTX 4090, which is 24 GB, and another is 840 GB. Since we had RTX 4090 with us, we participated in the RTX 4090 track. So Neurips was like very different set of challenge, like where you cannot fine tune the model on millions of data points because you only have one day of fine tuning with one GPU. So you have to be like really creative in terms of how you fine tune, what data points you fine tune on, and things like that. And um, other than model merging, did you happen to do any test with the model yourself, and then you felt the model is actually performing better? Like, is there any example or any feeling that you have um, about how it was? Yeah. So, at, to be honest, like uh, we tried. Actually, I can provide one very interesting insight. So, in this particular set of in this particular work of Lama Three Storm, we did not do any model alignment step specifically. So, basically, like I said. We did the self curation based SFT and then we did the model merging, right? But we found when we tested the model on, let's say, asking the question, asking some bad question, right? Can you abuse something or things like that? Our model still had the alignment property and it refused to answer those question. Again, thanks to the model merging and spectrum based fine tuning, we need to do an ablation study there, like how model is able to retain its original alignment capabilities but this was something that we have learned in this journey that when you do this selective fine tuning and do the model merging the some of the data alignment properties are still retained in the model so this was one finding that we sort of we were amazed by seeing that that you don't need to do fine tuning i mean you don't need to do alignment further so some of the align, alignment capabilities are still retained uh, and here yeah, to answer your question i guess now we are sort of instead of doing like we did not do sort of lot of wife check to be honest but i guess the we are seeing a lot of traction on twitter as well as or reddit where people are folks are like testing the model and i think we have we are noticing some appreciation for different tasks like data extraction summarization especially the function calling and i think there have been some appreciation around coding capabilities as well that is great and let's say theoretically speaking if i were to create and curate a new complete set of data that you did not use and if i were to filter it and then create a let's say high quality subset either i go pay a company like scale or i build it myself and then i do a slurp merging with your model there is a chance that the new model theoretically should be better than this model and the all the other base tuning 
yeah so it could be an but i think there are some interesting things like uh, i i guess the data sets should be like that that the merging should actually complement right mm. so in our case uh, you can pick different data set and curate but if those the the new model that you are you want to like merge with llama 3.1 storm if its capabilities are not complicating like complementing the capabilities of 3.1 storm then mm. probably you won't see any better um, better performance so in the end i think the model merging is all about like the capabilities of two tasks should complement each other in the end i guess okay um that's a very interesting point it's it's not like i can take two similar models and merge and expect it to become better it has yes, to yes. really complement it has, i have to bring two different worlds together and then merge exactly yeah yeah so i think we also saw like llama spark uh, it was not doing well on function calling and that's where when you merge it the merge model does well on the function calling right so there are like lot of such nuances like uh, you have to pick the right models to merge because there are like a lot of llama 3.1 fine tunes that are available on hugging face so you have to pick the right model and things like that ultimately things should complement each other so and how much it. sorry yeah no, i was just asking like this looks like a lot of work uh, starting from uh, filtering you need compute again curation difficulty based you need compute uh, you need to compute to fine tune you need compute to merge uh, how what what kind of compute are we talking about scale like have you mentioned it anywhere Yeah so for the model merging you don't need any compute model merging you can do independently on the on the cpu right so for the for the data curation and spectrum based fine tuning you generally need compute but i think we used around uh, 400 hours of compute in general 400 mm-hmm. to something like that so it's not like very heavy because at the end you are doing a partial fine tuning here right and it's a 8 billion model so mm-hmm. it's not very heavy on the compute side and like i said merging is you can do independently on cpu like you don't need gpu for that and 400 hours of like what is it like a100 what kind of machine yeah we use like uh, some a100 machines for that uh, yeah so i think it's i guess it's like total 400 hour of compute something like that yeah what do you think is the next step for your team and um, in terms of okay there are two parts to the question one is like why did you open source it including the technique and all those things like like you said right there would be like companies that would be interested in you could have like gone to the company and then given it but you have open sourced it second is what is the next step for your team after you open source this yeah so actually to be honest like all three of us we believe in like open source uh, believing we believe in like open sourcing like some of the best things that are generally not available to the community and something that should also does not require a lot of compute right so we have tried to optimize this process like uh, as you can see like we could have also fine tune our model on entire 3 million data point but we we intentionally try to build a recipe that is cheaper to build right and in future you can also like sort of improve this recipe so we have already started thinking of how to sort of improve the self curation for the So yeah I think our main idea to be honest like we want we believe in open source uh believing like publishing thing in the open source and that also helps the community and again like internet also helps us to gain the visibility as uh, visibility as such in terms of the community so yeah I think our hope is that uh, while we could only publish the model we wanted to publish the technique as well in terms of the blog so that's why we did that and the hope is that community can take it and they can even improve it further so that is the and in terms of next step like we want to i think one next step is very clear we want to publish the series of storm models we are calling it the brand storm so we want to publish series of storm model that could be 2 billion category 4 billion 8 billion and for that i guess at this point we are looking for the compute so if and we are looking for both compute as well as collaboration with startups so that is where we are very open and we are actively trying to figure out and if anyone wants to collaborate with us just feel free to reach out and we will we would be happy to build custom llms as well as collaborate further on that when you when you say like you are looking for people with compute like can you give me like a figure can you give me like a scale what does in your mind so we are looking like uh, honestly like one uh, some 800 kind of uh, gpus uh, maybe for like some few months uh, so that will help us and like build like accelerate our effort in terms of building different models and also 
along with building the like you can see llama 3.1 storm is a generalist model right it is not a domain specific model we also want to build different domain specific models that can be directly used by the basically we want to build a use case specific model that would be helpful for different startups working in different domains so yeah i think we are looking for like some like six months or like one year kind of compute support uh, and then so we are looking for like four to eight gpus kind of thing so it depends like okay. how how the companies are interested right so cool let's see like if anybody who watches this um, i'll also send it to to a bunch of my contacts and uh, if anybody is interested probably they'll reach out to you and i want to also understand like see you have a full time career you have a job and this is more like a hobby research baby uh, part of you know your team why are you more interested in uh, taking this forward like any particular reason is it just community contribution i think uh, to be honest like this is the time like uh when we started uh, working on let's say the arithmo which is mathematical reasoning model we were like we did not like plan from day one that we want to like sort of do the best in terms of like building open source model right but eventually we did and now we feel like okay with uh, with arithmo with neurips and now with lama 3.1 storm we feel like i think uh, as a team we have the right uh, right set of expertise and uh, given that we are open sourcing everything like we have open source the neurips work in terms of publication open source the arithmo and as well as this i think this it feels like a natural extension to us like where we are not like close sourcing right we are not trying to like hide anything we are sort of publishing everything so seems like yeah seems like a very natural thing to do right to me yeah, yeah i mean we have seen a couple of research units like news research they got funded uh, cognitive computations if you know like eric hartford and uh, the the dolphin samantha and uh, now we have a storm family so it's always good for the community when we have like more models diverse models not the not the same recipe so i'm i'm happy that you know you guys exist and uh, this model exists what would you give us an advice for people who are like beginning let's say want to do something like you guys yeah so basically i have thought about it so one thing i feel very very like helpful at least for myself is like one like someone like if you are interested in ai space it's always start to take up some small project right that small project could be let's say you just clone a github repo right from a research paper or you and you clone the you clone the repo you sort of you know tweak around it get get it to working and then you change the change the items like change the different component there maybe you want to you want to replace the data with your data you want to replace the fine tuning algorithm right so that is one way where you can you want to let's say jump start and do a make a quick progress right another way is like there are also people who want to like who like to implement things from scratch right so in my early days i have also done that like where i published we i we sort of built like published some open source repo around like building a dependency parser which is purely implemented in tensorflow but that was like back in 2016 17 right so that is also another mode of working there you learn things like how to build things from scratch so i guess uh, and most of the time to be honest these things don't work that is the reality uh, but i guess the best part is when you when you work and it fails you learn the you learn the process and the most important thing you learn the intuition of what works and what does not work and that leads to i guess that just adds up you don't even if you don't realize it just adds up in the future you end up making progress i think i also want to like andres karpati he calls it snowballing so he called this like just snowball different different small project and you will never realize when the when it will become a big snowball right so i would say like and i think one more point i want to highlight before i forget is like i think there we we should also stop sh- feeling shy about asking question let's say if you are blogged just reach out to people raise a github raise a ticket on the github or just ask the question in the discord channel i think that is the best way like given the given that llm world is moving so fast you have to be like shameless you have but and you have to be hard working i guess like honestly there is no replacement of that i, I think yeah this is this is really great advice thank you so much we'll link all the required links in the youtube description and thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us thank you yeah thank you for hosting us abdul it's been a pleasure yeah